All right, guys, I'm out here on the Ohio River today, and uh, it's pretty calm. We have zero current. Actually, it's probably running backwards if you ask me, but uh, we're not even going to try to catch some big fish today. I, what I did, I, I ate me some catfish in Alabama the other day, and I really, really liked it. So I'm going to try to catch me some catfish, some blue cats out here today, you know, 10, 15 pound size that we can take home and uh, fillet up and put in the frying pan. So. What we're gonna do is, is uh, I'm gonna downsize my baits just a little bit. We're still, we're gonna drag some baits behind the boat uh, and we're gonna suspend some baits under the boat. And what we're gonna target today is muscle beds, big, deep, flat muscle beds. And that's where a lot of these uh, smaller teenage fish, I guess you wanna say, would, would hang out. Uh, and an occasional big fish. So we may, we may la lag into, a, log into a big fish too, but you never know. But we're gonna start here in this 25 foot of water and we're gonna just kind of ease on down. Uh, this is a big, big flat right here. There is a secondary channel on the other side. Uh, I think it's actually more of a barge blowout. But uh, we're not gonna concentrate on that today. We're gonna concentrate on these deep flats and, and see if we can't get some, some eater fish caught up. Stay tuned, let's get started. Here's the size bait we're going to use for these smaller blue cats, the ones you want to take home for supper. And we're fishing them on a suspended rig. We're going to ease him on down. Give him a couple cranks and stick him in. These other two, we're gonna drag. We're gonna drag these two behind the boat using a Kentucky rig. Gotta get turned around here. We won't throw this one out so far. That way they don't tangle up with one another. We'll drag this one kind of primarily under the boat. All right, let's go to dragging. Uh oh, that's hung up. That's what's gonna happen when you drag guys. Sometimes you're gonna get them hung up. And you'll break them off, they'll pull off sometimes. We're in a little rough territory here, but most of these flats are just flat and it won't do that a lot once we get beyond this little point. If I don't lose him between now and then. Looks 
looks like we're moving to point about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 mile an hour. Oh, look here. Oh, mercy. This, oh, oh. Oh, that's on my new McCoy line too. Can you imagine this? Little bitty piece of bait, boys. I told you we might luck into a nice one. We're down here on the Ohio River about just a few miles south of Louisville. Boat control. Boat control. You better listen. Oh! This fish got some shoulders on it, boys. Let's see. We're gonna pull him up slowly because he was down deep about 35. We're probably fixing to see a jacuzzi happen here just in a second. Oh! Taking that drag. Taking that drag. He's going up river too. There's more drag. We're trying to get him out of the way of this boat coming, this big tug coming. I think we'll get him up by then. Taking more. This was our first drift, guys. We hadn't drifted three minutes. And I hope it don't get me tangled up. I'm already tangled up back there. Right. He's gonna come up right back there, Lisa. He's trying to come up now. I ain't seen no bubbles yet, though. <coughs> this is gonna be a nice fish. He's, he's trying to come up a little bit. He's running again. Here he comes. Oh, there's some bubbles out there. Look at them. Right in front of me, Lisa. Here he comes. I see, I see some white. I see color, boys. I see color. Oh, he's a nice one. Hey, he's a real nice one. I caught him on the suspended rod. We're hung up on that other one. Oh, here you go. Oh. Look, I'm hung up on everything we got. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's still not wanting to come up. Sometimes it's a two-man job. Look at there, look at there. What a beast. What a beast. There we go. Now, for all my haters who says I can't, I don't fish Kentucky waters anymore because I can't catch fish here. Here's what you got. 
Nice. Hook set. There we go. There we go. Boys, I don't even know what to say he's going away. There goes my net. In the water. There he is, guys. You know, I cut that small piece of bait. We come down here looking for some eaters. And like I said, you never know. These big ones are in here too. There we go. Nice fish. We're all tangled up with everything else. We're gonna try to return this fish. Oh. And get back out there. This is a young fish too, guys. This fish is big, but this fish is still young. And the reason you can tell is the length of it. He hasn't filled out girth-wise, but he's he's got some good length to him. Alright guys, we're gonna return this thing back to the water. So somebody else can catch another day. Oh. Yeah, it's an awesome fish. Whew. And he didn't have no problem. I tell you guys, if you let them blow those, that decompress, blow them bubbles off, they don't have a problem going back down the bottom when you, uh, when you turn them loose. Let's get on another one. Let's get on some eaters this time. I come here for some 10 pounders, but I'll never turn them big fish down. All right, let's get straightened up. My skipjack still frozen. But, I think it's easy enough to cut though. All right. Yeah, that fish, that fish hit my little piece of bait at about two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon in August. A time when you think the big ones would be laying and hiding somewhere. This one's out feeding. But in all honesty, that's not what we come here for. We come here for some 10 pounders that I could fillet. But we're never gonna turn chance to catch a big fish down that's for sure I guess he was on this flat just feeding like the rest of them and he actually might have been feeding on the smaller fish that was feeding on the mussels and stuff that's down here on this mussel bed Lord, it's hot all right we're about to get straightened up from that last ordeal turned around I'll throw my dragon rods back out that was a mess that barge come by got me all tangled all the rods I had here we go I'm gonna freshen them up Freshen them up. I'm going to drag him to behind the boat, about a hundred feet. Alright All right, guys, there's a couple nice fish laying on the bottom right there. 
And we got some structure coming up too. Structure or maybe some wood cover, I'm not sure just yet. We might be able to put it on that down stance, down scan. That's probably a log. Probably a log down there. But we're in some fish here, but they look like big fish. I may have to move to the next muscle bed to find some smaller fish. There's another nice fish hanging around some kind of cover down there. Maybe we'll drag one of these lines across it. That's a fish, boys. Now that was that was on the drag, and that's what a, a hit looks like. If you can determine between the hit and you're dragging, but this is the one we're looking for. This is going to be a sandwich. All right, and we didn't let him blow his bubbles, and that's what happens, guys. They just float. He'll try to go back down. And you think he's went back down? And down river somewhere he floats up because he can't get back down. But now if he blows in bubbles, he'll be all right. That's where a lot of guys make the mistakes when they're in a tournament and they pull these things up out of the deep like that and just immediately put them in a live well. And they go belly up. I can't remember the last fish I had that didn't make it. But I guarantee you this one ain't gonna make it. He's fixing to get fried. You know, that's a, that's a filet right there. We need one more. One for me and one for mama. All right. Yeah, let's straighten this back up and get back on course and grab us another one. Mama's fillets. He didn't want to give up that hook. Don't put me in the frying pan. There's another couple good fillets. All right, we're gonna cruise on down to the next spot and play around. I haven't been in this neck of the woods for a couple years. We'll kind of see what's changed and what stayed the same. All right, guys, this is the last spot I'm gonna fish. It's about a two mile drift. If I wanna drift it, it's gonna be a steady 30, 35 to 40 foot uh, flat. It's to kind of slowly go up and down. There's really no irregularities or uh, drops or anything on it. It's just a real flat muscle bed uh, that runs around this channel bend through here. I've got on a bunch of fish here before. I've even got on some big fish, but this is a real good bank for numbers of, of smaller 10, 15 pound fish. But uh, we're gonna run four more rods out, two suspended and two dragging and see what's up.
we're going to stick with our regular small bait because like I say, I'm not looking for any more big fish. Although we'll, we, we will take them if they bite. They're a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to get ready and move on up through here and see what we can do. Okay guys, we're going to have to use my trolling motor to, to pull us where we want us. Uh, the wind's blowing against us, which makes it easier to pull and control where we want to be uh, rather than if the wind was blowing opposite direction. But either way, we could control it with the trolling motor. Uh, it's just a little bit more pain in the, in the rear. Uh, we like a little bit of current, but if we don't have it, we gotta, we got to create our own. He's a decent one, but he's not as big. First one we caught. It just shows you though, fellas, I put a little bitty piece of bait on to catch some average size eater fish. And I catch a big one. And I put a huge, huge uh, piece of bait, double hook rig, and catch a small one here. And we're getting ready to get hooked up again. Let me get him gone. He's a little bit bigger. We can't keep him. But there he goes. All right. Guys, you never know in catfishing. You just never know. You know, the best baits, I say, is uh, live bait. You know, any kind of cut bait, fresh cut bait. You never know in catfishing. I've seen guys catch them on hot dogs, marshmallows, and all other kind of homemade concoctions. You just never know. Okay, guys, these blue cats run these, these mussel beds. What they'll do, I guess, they just scavenge down in the rocks and stuff and eat the mussel beds. I guess they absorb the mussel inside and then they either regurgitate or it goes out the other end, the shell does. Makes it pretty rough on the fish, I imagine, but blue cats love these little mussels. And you know, a lot of times when we fish tournaments, uh, and you put them in the in the live well here. And, and matter of fact, when we get these two out, you may see some mussels. Uh, but they're just little bitty small mussels, the zebra mussels, and any other kind of you know mussels like that. But uh, anywhere from the little ten pounders up to what well, you see in a sixty pounder will roam these flats, these uh, mussel flats, uh, looking for the next meal. So give it a try next time you're uh, out on the river and. Uh, you run across a, a deep water flat with the muscle bed on it, you'll, uh, you'll catch some good fish. All right, guys, we've caught several fish today. I think we're going to call it a day. Uh, we've got our two eaters we're going to take home. We've caught some decent fish, and we caught one real nice fish. But uh, this time of year in August, if you look for the, the deep flats along in the Ohio River, uh, along the muscle beds, and you can tell a muscle bed just by being a gravelly type hump maybe in the river, um, but if you drift on the muscle beds, you're gonna you're gonna catch a few fish. Okay, guys, as usual, thanks for watching my video. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with what I got going on, I've got a new uh, Facebook page. Uh, I think it's Facebook backslash WildCattersTV.com. Uh, check us out. See ya.